All right, let's work on 8.3. Find intercepts from the graph. Well, what are intercepts? It's where it crosses the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Very easy to find. All right, so here's our graph. Find out where it crosses the x-axis and where it crosses the y-axis, right there. So your x-intercept, x-intercept is how I want you to write it. I want you to write it as an ordered pair, so x is negative two comma zero. Your y-intercept is when x is zero, then you know why. Your y is negative two, because it's right here. That's where it crosses the y-axis, because intercept means crosses, and this is where it crosses the x-axis. So you're just gonna write them as ordered pairs. And here you go again. Your x-intercept, well, it doesn't cross the x-intercept, so don't say zero, say none. Your y-intercept, it crosses at x is zero and y is positive two, right here. So you don't go right or left, which is why x is zero, you just go up, horizontal line. Here we go, your x-intercept right here. So when you want your x-intercept, y is zero. When you want your y-intercept, x is zero. So it looks like that. So x-intercept is gonna be one, and it looks like your y-intercept is three. Here, your x-intercept is negative one, comma zero, and your y-intercept, well, there is none because it's not passing the y-intercept. It's a vertical line. So let's look at these for a minute. This slope is negative. Can you see it? Very steep slope, negative. This slope is not negative, it's not positive, this is a vertical line, and your, your equation for this is x equals negative one. And the slope is what we say is undefined. Okay? So just remember that, slope is undefined. All right, find the x and y intercept. So again, here's your equation. If I want my x-intercept, I'm going to make y zero. If I want my y-intercept, I want my x to be zero. Now, remember in 8.2, I had you changing it into this format. Okay, whenever it wasn't, I wanted it in this format to find four solutions. For finding x and y-intercept, it doesn't matter what form it's in. It could be in slope intercept, or remember this one, it could be in standard form. This is in standard form. Leave it like that. So if I want my x-intercept, I'm gonna make y zero. So I have x plus two times zero equals four. So x equals four. So your x-intercept here is four. This one for y-intercept, you're gonna make the x zero. So it just becomes a one-step equation. Solve for y, divide both sides by two. Y equals two, that's your y-intercept, okay? So you're just substituting. Remember, when you want the x-intercept, you have a number for x, y is zero. When you want the y-intercept, you have a number for y, and x, you're gonna substitute zero in for x and solve for y. And leave it in standard form. So here we go. First of all, notice it's in standard form, okay? So x-intercept, y is zero. Look for x, y-intercept, x is zero, find y. So start with x-intercept. You're gonna make your y value zero, so that would mean this would just go away and x would be none, okay? And if you want your y-intercept, then this is gonna go away, and you're gonna have three y equals nine, and divide both sides by three, and you would get three. This is in slope-intercept form. Here's your slope, here's your y-intercept. I would do plus negative as to make a mistake. Leave it in this form. 
Because let me tell you, you already know what your y-intercept is. We've talked about that before. Your y-intercept is your beginning point. It is the B right here. So there's your y-intercept. It's already there. When you're in slope-intercept form, you already know your y-intercept. So now all you have to do is find your x-intercept. So remember, when I want the x-intercept, I'm going to make y zero. So it's going to go like this. y is zero equals 3x plus negative 6. Solve for x. Add 6 to both sides. 6 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3. x is 2. Okay? So remember, y equals mx plus b. This is your y-intercept, okay? Just remember that. And then if you wanna find your x-intercept, then you're just gonna go ahead and plug zero in for y and solve for x. When it's in standard form, it's just as easy to do. You just have to do more substituting. And there you graph it. Here, first of all, you wanna be able to look at this and know exactly what kind of equation it is. Can you tell me that it's a positive slope? So it's a positive linear line and it's a beginning point, a y-intercept is four. So I already know my y-intercept. It's right there. So y-intercept is zero comma four, done. X-intercept, make y equal to zero. And then go ahead and solve this equation for x. So you get negative four equals two x. Divide both sides by two. X is equal to negative two. That's your X intercept, where it crosses the X axis. And again, slope intercept form. Y equals M slope X plus B Y intercept. B is the beginning, B is the Y intercept. M is the slope. M is also the coefficient has lots of name. I knew it was a positive line because the slope was positive, so it's a positive line, okay? And I know how to graph this because remember, it's rise over run, so start at your beginning, which is four, and rise, one, two, run one, one, two, run one, one, two, run one. Or you could have started at this point and went up two to the right one, up two to the right one, up two to the right one, all creates a positive linear line. When you look at this, can you see your y-intercept is gonna be 300? Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna go ahead and solve for your x-intercept by adding 50 to both sides. So you have 50x equals 300, divide by 50, Cross out that, and x is going to be equal to 6. So your y-intercept is 0, 300, and your x-intercept is 6, 0. When you graph it, you know you're going to have a negative slope, a negative linear line. So it's going to go down like that. Describe what the intercepts mean. In this case, the y-intercept shows how much money Renata has in her budget before any work is done. The x-intercept means that she can afford only six hours of plumbing repair. So let's go back and look at the graph. So the y-intercept means this is how much money she has to spend and they can't work over six hours, otherwise she will go in debt. We don't want her to go in debt. Same kind of thing with this one. You can do the same process. There's your y-intercept right there. That's how much money they start with. Um, this is how many pairs of shoes that she can buy. All right, notice, remember I said this is our equation that we like to work with? Well, hmm, there's no x in this problem. There's only a b. So when you have an equation that's just y equals negative four, then it's only gonna cross the y-axis at negative four. It's not gonna go near the x-axis. So it looks like this. 
horizontal line at negative 4. Okay? When it's x equals 5, it's going to be a vertical line because it's only crossing x at 5. Right there. Its table looks like this means um, I don't care what y is, x will always be 5. I don't care what you choose for y, okay? I will always go to the right 5, up 1, to the right 5, up 2, to the right 5. I'm always going to the right 5 to create a vertical line. This will be a vertical line crossing at 3. This will be a horizontal crossing at negative 2. And that's it for 8.3. Good luck.